Hello everyone, welcome back to YK Reviews. For today's video, it's going to be the next sequence of the Scream franchise movie reviews. This is all about Scream 4 that comes out in 2011, so let's get into it here. Now with Scream 4, this was essentially sort of like a reboot type of movie. Basically back in 2011, 2010, all these reboots coming out, Friday the 13th reboot, Nightmare on Elm Street reboot, just so many different types of reboots for horror movies coming out here so they decided to make scream 4 come out as well a reboot type of movie but also following legacy characters and everything like that here and with this one i watched it for the first time um earlier this week in preparation for scream 5 just because as i mentioned in one of the reviews with scream like i had grown up as a kid so the Scream movies and the scary movies were just blended into my memory. So for me growing up, Ghostface was an image of Ghostface going, what's up on the phone. So I sort of just didn't take it serious because of my mind just blended these two movies together. But now that rewatching it here, just loving this franchise, loving these movies, I feel like with the 2011 one, the movie itself, with what they did back then, to like if you're thinking about it in this day and age, I feel like it does work here. So if we start off with the movie, in terms of the opening sequence, the traditional opening sequence, for me, I feel like this was one of the weakest opening sequences of a screen movie because you start off with these two characters talking about horror movies, mostly in particular talking about Saw and basically dismissing Saw, saying how there's no character development or anything like that, which I completely disagree. Saw so is a fantastic movie franchise and like there is character development throughout the movies and ongoing. If you haven't seen the Saw movies, I won't give out anything in too much detail, but there is a lot of like character development. I really love the Saw movies and I feel like these two girls were completely wrong about the Saw movies when they were discussing it, apart from the last couple of ones. I'll give them that, but the first... like four or five movies were very solid entries there but basically they're having this discussion about horror movies and doing the commentary about horror movies in the year of 2011 and then they get a call from Ghostface basically and then they get killed off but we come to find out that this was an opening sequences to a stab movie where two girls are watching this movie so it was an opening sequences within an opening sequence where these two girls talk about horror movies for then one of them to stab the other one in the chest to then have this being opening sequences to another opening sequence. So basically, long story short, it's an opening sequence within an opening sequence within an opening sequence. Two girls talking about horror movies, doing the commentary, getting killed by Ghostface, but everything just felt lackluster. Even like the characters and the kills with Ghostface, you just sort of felt meh. I didn't even know if this was an actual another opening sequence or if it was generally part of the movie, but it just overall, I just felt like it was just too metaverse and just confusing and just even the kills too like there wasn't much suspense when the final two girls got killed by Ghostface I just thought it was very lackluster so the opening sequence for Scream 4 is probably the least favorite of mine in the whole franchise but then we do that we cut to the tradition of seeing where the legacy characters are in this time of their lives so we come to find out that Sydney is actually visiting Woodsboro doing her book tour where she's basically now just writing uh, about everything not in terms of like Gail Weathers books or anything like that but I really like what they did with this where she's just got peace and she's at where she's just at peace down writing helping other people with like the trauma that they're experiencing obviously not the same trauma but it's just a really nice development there so we get to see Sydney doing this book tour here we get to see Dewey now is basically the sheriff of Woodsboro which I thought was really nice Gail is sort of stuck at a standstill where she doesn't know what to write anymore now like just with no events going on in terms of like the murders or anything like that she just has no like creativity no creative spark to ignite her writing career and so basically with this town you've got like it's coming to like the anniversary of the uh, the murders of Woodsboro here and so you've just got ghost face like masks and costumes all around we actually get to see like in Sydney's um trunk of her car all these blood and like pictures and stuff being basically being framed for the murders of the two girls from the opening sequences here which basically makes the sheriff Dewey Riley 
force her to stay in the town and so then we get introduced to the new set of like new generation of characters basically you've got kirby you've got jill the two movie geeks here with charlie and robbie and you just see this element of high school and that kind of stuff being played in the role here and these are the new generation of screen characters now that we're going to be following because even doing the research here is that we come to find out that this movie was originally supposed to be a trilogy of movies with these characters and like what they were going to do with scream four five and six Obviously, it wasn't to be due to box office numbers and all that kind of stuff, but that's a story for a different time here. But these are the characters we're going to be following along with our legacy characters. And so because of these murders here, we've got Gail Weathers wanting to do her own investigation, wanting to help to try and solve these murders, just like how she's done in Scream 1, 2 and 3. So we basically got this little dynamic between Officer Hicks and um, Courtney Cox with Dewey in a standstill between them. I feel like it's over the lemon squares that Judy Hicks has been baking him and he just doesn't want to taste it but something tells me that he he has tried the lemon squares and that he does like it but just doesn't want to tell Gail but and I feel like Gail is jealous of those lemon squares too but we see the dynamic there we see that Dewey is basically being the good sheriff not wanting Gail to be involved because it looks professional so Gail has to go off and like try and do the investigations on her own and that's where she has this dynamic with um with these new characters with Charlie and with Robbie with Kirby trying to figure out because of the new commentary on horror movies but before all of that happens we get to see the next murder because that night where Sydney is staying at Jill and her sister's house we come to find out that Sydney has a sister and a niece so she's staying with them you have these officers parked outside there and you have Jill and Kirby's friend Olivia in the opposite house basically Ghostface calls Kirby starts stalking them basically playing games mind games on the phone with Kirby and Jill basically saying that he's in the closet when he when they open the closet door that suspense of like nothing being there only to come to find out that Ghostface is in the opposite house with Olivia and kills her in a brutal fashion there stabbing her multiple times even like pushing her head out the window and that's where you get Jill and Sydney running to the house Sydney having that face to face with Ghostface Jill gets stabbed in the arm too and we get that hospital sequence too where Sydney's assistant wants to take advantage of this, wants to help boost the book sales with all these murder going on. So Ghostface decides to pay her a visit in the parking lot. And I love this. I love the suspense with this in terms of like her trying to get into the car, going into the car, coming out of the car. Ghostface just messing with her mind, teasing her to eventually then killing her and throwing her off of the hospital and to the, um, the roof of the car. I really like that sequence is there so I thought that was really well done good riddance to her too she was an annoying character for me and that's when we get to see now the scene the classic scene of the rules of the movie and this is what I was mentioning in the beginning of my review because this movie came out in 2011 the whole aspect of live blogging um, live streaming um, the social media aspect of everything it was so early and like so young back in 2011 so you've got this character with his headphones streaming everything Kirby shows Gail and Sid the live stream on the phone because if you look at everything everybody's live streaming you've got Twitch you've got YouTube you've got so many other places TikTok and Twitter and all that kind of stuff so everybody's doing that now but back in 2011 it was so new and so different versus everything like we have got nowadays especially because in 2011 you had the most popular thing was like Facebook and MySpace so like this really wasn't a big element too but basically when it comes to explaining the new rules of the horror movies here we've got this yeah you gotta have an opening sequence that blows the doors off dial up some flashy music video direction and the kill's gotta be way more extreme and so now that we basically find out that they after all of this Gail and Sid figure out that the next time Ghostface will be appearing is basically when they're having this stab stabathon marathon where they're just doing all the stab movies which is a common thing in this day and age too as well so basically you have got the characters these kids in this like house or warehouse or wherever it was streaming these movies you have like that atmosphere and elements similar to like the scream 2 opening sequence gail is there she's put setting up cameras only to find out that Ghostface is doing this as well, one-upping her, and that's when Gale and Ghostface come face-to-face -face with one another, Ghostface attacking Gale Weathers, and to the point where he stabs her in the shoulder to escape. And then you've also got, while this is going on, you've got outside Jill's house too, you've got Ghostface coming out there, 
killing the two officers that were like guarding the house of Jill because they did such a fantastic job with Olivia's house. Ghostface ends up killing them in such a brutal fashion too where he basically stabs the officer outside. They were going back and forth with also like rules of horror movies and that kind of stuff. He's Ghostface stabs one of the officers and then just stabs the other officer right in the head with that, that officer swinging like no tomorrow, falling down on the floor, dying with his famous last words. Fuck Bruce Willis. And so Ghostface then goes after Sydney and his sister, where they try to like close the door only for Ghostface to use the letterbox to stab Sydney's sister in the back, killing her. As Sydney takes advantage, tries to leave, takes the car and like escapes. And that's when we basically now get to like the third act of the movie, the big final party. So the party has now moved to Kirby's house. So you've got Jill, you've got Kirby, you've got Robbie, you've got Charlie and you've got Trevor, who is Jill's ex-boyfriend which I didn't really talk about throughout the movie because he's sort of in and out you have your suspicions of him he has like Billy Loomis vibes to him but he's essentially just a harmless character because you come to find out that he gets tied up just like Sydney's father in Scream 1 the original one he gets tied up he's locked in the closet he's gonna be framed for the uh, the murders in itself so he's sort of just like a um, side character there but then you have this party going on people are like disappearing in and out of the room here you see Kirby and Charlie maybe finally start to feel that connection there, start kissing and people are having the suspicion of Trevor because he claims that he was texted to come to the party. But essentially the third act is this little like back and forth at the party with each of these characters here. And that's when Ghostface arrives and starts killing um, Robbie and he kills him while being live streamed. He's drunk, wandering around outside and just doing everything he can to avoid getting killed by Ghostface. I, I'm gay, I'm gay. If it helps. And that's when um, Sydney arrives and she arrives, she manages to try and get Jill and Kirby to escape. Jill gets separated from them and then you've got Kirby and Sid going down to the uh, basement, I believe it was. And that's where you have that recreation of the first scene in the first screen movie where you've got the boyfriend tied up to the chair there and just before that like he's knocking on the window asking to come inside the house when obviously Kirby is now all suspicious doesn't trust anybody there even Sydney's giving her like warnings like if you trust him or not and then you get that recreation where he's tied up to the chair which allows Kirby to go and try to rescue him and then you get the big reveal where he is one of the ghost faces and I'll be completely honest his reveal was kind of meh to me because his motives, as we come to find out later on in the movie, is out of love and he just didn't really do much in terms of the presence of Ghostface there. So I'm planning on doing like a tier ranking of all the Ghostface and all the Scream movies, but a little sneak peek for me is he's going to probably be like the bottom of the list tier ranking as the ghost face because he's just something was lacking for me when it comes to him being ghost faced but he ends up stabbing Kirby and we don't know what happens to Kirby whether she is alive or dead after seeing the Scream 6 trailer and there was a bit of easter eggs in Scream 5 that people were talking about when she was alive so we did find out that she was alive eventually but she gets stabbed and is dropped to the floor and that's where we see Sydney and Jill and this is where Jill has been revealed to be Ghostface and you kind of saw it coming like I said I didn't see this movie when it came out and like the hype and like the theories and all that kind of stuff there but you kind of did see it coming it was pretty obvious as the movie was progressing that she was going to be revealed as Ghostface but for me I think her performance is in the third act her motives what she put herself through was just phenomenal and really ranks her up there as one of like the top ghost face obviously not the top two but really does have that threatening ghost face presence to it so basically once she does reveal herself to be ghost face her motives is that she is looking to be the next sydney prescott she wants to be famous have that fame the glory be what Sydney Prescott is when it comes to like media and that attention there. And to be honest with you, like, because like I mentioned, this movie coming out in 2011, sort of, you don't really get to appreciate or enjoy that aspect because of the social media presence in this movie versus now, because if you go on TikTok, thousands of people are doing the dumbest things on TikTok to try to get famous. You have the blackout challenge you even had like the cinnamon challenge a couple of years ago like a lot of people are doing ridiculous things to get 
famous, this motive isn't as wild or out there as what it is like in the real world right now. I even saw like a um, news article about so many people dying from different like challenges on TikTok too. So it's not out of the realms of possibility because especially what she does too, because like as she reveals to be Ghostface, she ends up killing Trevor and she ends up killing Charlie by stabbing him through the heart. They're trying to recreate the whole billion stew um, dynamic of hurting each other so that they are revealed as victims, but she ends up stabbing him in the heart. Like I mentioned, him just doing this out of love, ironically gets stabbed in the heart. She um, stabs Sid and just goes obliterating herself. The things that she does to just make sure that it becomes believable, like smashing her head through like a portrait glass, falling back onto the um, coffee table, grabbing Trevor's hand and just pulling her hair. It's just, she goes to complete nut job on herself, which I just stand up and applaud that here. And then you get to like the final sequences here as it's a hospital scene. She is basically revealing to Dewey about something that only Ghostface would know where she reveals that she knew that um, Gail Weathers got stabbed in the shoulder, basically similar injuries that she did too. So sort of giving her a way that she becomes Ghostface. She then goes to finish off Sydney Prescott because Dewey revealed that she's still alive. So she goes to finish off Sydney Prescott. Again, something that like a, a great Ghostface, like great mannerisms, great behavior, she, even like the lines that she delivers to Sydney as well. Who are you, Michael fucking Myers? She's going to um, kill Sydney. Dewey Riley comes in and just gets beaten the crap out of with like those metal pants that you have in the hospital here, which, I don't know, it just cracked me up the way she just was smacking him around with that. And once again, like just reiterating how great of a ghost face she was, she's like in the room. So you've got Sydney, you've got Gail, you've got Dewey, and then you've got Officer Hicks there. She shoots Officer Hicks. She goes to try to kill um, Gail too. Like she's just got this presence about her. So Sydney comes from behind, uses a defibrillator machine to just shock her in the head. And you once again get that final sequence, that one last burst of energy, only for her to get shot as the final like there, eventually killing Jill. But just once again, a brilliant like ghost face for me, a great motive, great sequences, having that um, battle and the third act and the party, even continuing it in the hospital sequences there. I really enjoyed this for what it was at its time, I think didn't peak as well as it should have done maybe because it's so early in terms of social media back then but i think overall this was a really brilliant scream movie a great ghost face especially once a reveal comes a true ghost face comes out i think jill was a brilliant ghost face and a brilliant way to recognize social media and what it is the negative aspects of social media for its time right now compared to like how it was in 2011 and how it was still growing. So just overall a brilliant fun movie for me here and a great a great reboot movie um, for the Scream franchise here. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions in the comment section down below, what your thoughts are about Scream 4, what your thoughts are about Chiller's Ghostface, and also your thoughts in terms of like the whole reboot movie in itself. Please let me know down your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, like button, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos here on the channel. Again, Scream 5 review will be coming out along with Scream 6. So they will be coming out in the next um, couple of days or within the same day here, back to back. And keep an eye out on the channel for the Scream tier ranking for Ghostface and the movies. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. This is YK Reviews.